Yeah, I thought there was going to be red-haired bisexual vampires, too. I know that's kind of an abrupt way to begin my preamble, but really, there's little else to talk about Curse of the Yoma. Think about any ninja anime cliché and trope you know of, and it's not only present and accounted for in Curse of the Yoma, it's damn near indexed. I've made it plenty clear before that the hardest thing to talk about is something that doesn't give you any strong feelings one way or the other, and that's this to the T. So why am I talking about it? Well, that's kind of how life goes, right? We experience our peaks and valleys, true, but most often we're caught in between. The day after we had a blast at Disneyland is not often followed by the day we accidentally break our arm, but rather followed by the day we spend a few hours waiting in line at the DMV. Some might rather break their arm than spend a single minute in line at the DMV, but the feeling is the same regardless. It can't always be the best, and it certainly can't always be the worst. Sometimes beige is the color of the day, and that day is today. Hitting the ground running, we set off with our hero learning of his former friend and fellow ninja's treachery, having aligned himself with the Yoma, or the demonic monsters that spring forth from the ground itself. He's dispatched to learn his friend's whereabouts and terminate him. And the inevitable Naruto comparisons start now. Actually, I way prefer Naruto and Sasuke's relationship dynamic more than, uh, character A and B here. At least Naruto and Sasuke are two distinct personalities, which both sucked, but at least they were different. Here, it's like if Naruto was Sasuke and Sasuke was also Sasuke. Thus, we have these two indiscernible wet blankets that have all the magnetism of soggy white bread. And because there's so little plot to speak of, there's no sense of character development either. I feel like the title of this anime should be replaced with a serial number. But at least it knows where its comparatively speaking strength lies, and doesn't delay before we see our first action scene where Sasuke encounters some enemy ninjas on his mission. That also happened to explode when they die like they were a part of the freaking Cobra unit. <laughs> Well, at least that was fun. Unfortunately, after such a slobber knocker, Sasuke drifts off and reminisces of the laughably halcyon days of yore when Sasuke and Sasuke are actually played in a field of flowers. The Hallmark Channel wishes it could be this schmaltzy. <laughs> Pardon me, but I am waiting to administer your last rites. That is an appropriate reaction to someone saying that. Also an appropriate reaction to someone saying this. Drop your coat and grab your toes. I'm going to show you where the wild goose goes. And spinning in the face of logic, Sasuke follows Skullface to his hut. Well, maybe I'm being quick to judge. I mean, just because this guy has an obvious skull face, and just because he told him that this area is a respite for lost souls who wish to die, and just because we can clearly see two ninjas and a spider demon dart in and out of frame doesn't mean anything, right? Likewise, when Sasuke runs into a girl singing and she leads him to a village that seems way too happy-go-lucky for anyone to not be uncomfortable is probably me just being paranoid. Why does everyone here trust me? They don't know where I'm from. I'm a stranger. They are all good people. Ito! Her name is Ito. Hikage. You can use these. Thank you, Ito. Or it means I have half a brain! Run for it, you idiot! Or stick around the village and investigate what we already know. That demon spider shit is officially going down. And the episode is beyond half over by the time he learns this. And also learns from one of his fellow dying ninjas that was tailing him from earlier about the true history of sasuke -er. <coughs> The monsters will... <coughs> will revive. <coughs> Maru is a child. Born of the <coughs> of the ground. Impossible. The people of our village knew all about it. <coughs> they never talked about it. Okay, you knew he was a demon child, 
and you all decided to raise him. Okay, that I get, nature versus nurture and all that, but why the fuck did you teach him ninjutsu? Haven't you ever heard the term hedging your bets? This is why they allowed Frodo to carry the One Ring, because the worst thing that would happen is that he turns into another Gollum. What happens if, say, Galadriel carried it? Oh, Point is, you don't teach the demon child how to kill. And I can't believe I have to tell anyone this. At the very least, this encounter finally lights a fire under Sasuke's ass, and he decides to snick some spider bubs. Shocker of shocks, it turns out that Skullface is one of the spider demons who has been casting an illusion to ensnare suicidal people, so that they can have a steady stream of sacrifices for their king, sasuke -er. Okay, the plan is sound enough in theory, but why are you targeting suicidal people specifically? People who are guilty, weak, and at the bottom of their sadness. Those who despair and cannot survive the pain in their lives. Who cannot go back to their former lives, and are unworthy of continuing their life. What is wrong with eating them? Oh, so you can have this Dr. Kevorkian turn, eh? God damn it, give me a break, Skullface. You're a spider demon! You eat people! That's kind of what you're supposed to do! Don't try to sell me the idea that you, the eight-foot-large spider beast, is trying to weasel his way out of the chaotic evil alignment with this moral nosebleed bullshit. Same thing goes with that turtle demon and devil man. Dude, you keep sentient, writhing in pain souls in your shell, then use them as hostages to protect yourself. Not exactly scraping the moral event horizon, you catch me? <sighs> but yeah, Skullface bites it, but there is still that obviously evil woman from earlier to take care of. And Sasuke does the deed... somehow. I don't know how, but... Just watch. It is almost time for him to wake up! Were you the one who ate Maru? He got you! Do you guys know? Was, I mean, like, was that white phosphorus or maybe even firecrackers that he was keeping in his sword hilt? I mean, it doesn't really matter in the long run because it's just the creators magic wanting themselves out of this conflict. But I gotta know the in-universe explanation as to what we have just witnessed. Oh, and before I forget, the slam dunk here, he never uses this again. Because of course he doesn't. With the final spider demon killed, Sasuke finally confronts sasuke -er, interrupting his meal. He must get pretty testy when people do that, because he blows back Sasuke and collapses the entire shrine. Now, I know we never see him escape the shrine, but how much you want to wager that Sasuke is alright and wow! Didn't even let me finish the bet! Fuck you, Blood Rain! And true to what Skullface said, everyone in the village kills themselves. Somehow. Like, yeah, that one woman with a scar drowns herself, but how the fuck did these guys die? Did they make a pact that they would stab each other in the back so it doesn't look like a suicide? Why? <sighs> well, that was the first of two episodes, and so far the best thing I could say is, well, at least it was quick. Our next episode starts with Sasuke maxing and relaxing at the beach during his hunt for sasuke -er when he's confronted by a token ninja girl. Ninja, aren't you? Learned grammar in preschool, didn't you? There you are, rogue. Why did you run away after you killed our leader? I think you just answered your own question there, buddy. Yeah, she claims she didn't kill their leader, but what the hell does he expect her to do? Stay there and gloat? Oh, and this is never brought up again, so it fucking doesn't matter. Still, the others that tag along with the guy drag Sasuke into the fight, and together with Token, they dispatch the ninjas. But then all of a sudden, a demon horse appears from the frickin' sea! A horse? It's an illusion.
position. Man, I hope you didn't have money writing on that, Sasuke. Otherwise, the only thing emptier than your head would be your wallet. I know it's insignificant, but the timing on that could not have been better. All of a sudden, Sasuke looks like a complete chump. But sadly, our new lady ninja ain't much better. And you'll soon see why. The Yoma horse, in a truly surreal scene, is basically here to tell Sasuke that the Yoma are all going to be resurrected in one week. Like... For real. That's all this scene accomplishes. The horse undermining his own goal. Well, that, and it leads to Sasuke snicking some bubs again. All the while, Token just cries her eyes out. Told you it was soon. Just like a woman. Stop crying. I'm not just a woman. I'm a ninja. Just because I've been trained extensively how to murder people doesn't mean you have to be a jerk, you mean, mean man. Ah, fuck me sideways, this character is just awful in every regard. And it's not because she's a woman. If she weren't a ninja, then at least this kind of behavior is predicated on not being around death and blood. So seeing all of this would push anyone to their emotional limit, gender be damned. But she's supposed to be a ninja, and lest we forget, she just murdered a guy with freaking razor wire! Why the fuck is she playing the wilting flower now? What, because she saw a guy she knew get trampled by a horse? How many times must she have seen this exact kind of thing in battle since, you know, she's a ninja? Hey, god damn it. So much for not feeling strongly one way or the other. And like a lost kitten, Token follows Sasuke for some reason. Maybe she's smitten by his cold and utter contempt for her. Still, these feelings must be shelved because the foulest stench is in the air. The funk of 40,000 years and grisly ghouls from every tomb are closing in and gently walking past them without even a scratch. You know, I am glad that the anime went with this direction because having them fight zombies would mean something would be happening, which is the complete diametric opposite of what the anime wants to happen. Which is nothing! And I wish this review could properly convey how much nothing goes on, but I could throw up a literal blank screen and that still wouldn't do it. Character moments that fall flat and are continually ran over, just in case we couldn't care less the first time around, action beats that don't tie anywhere into the central plot and are played off more like random encounters in an RPG than anything that belongs in motion pictures, and most galling of all, long stretches of scenery that feel less about setting the appropriate mood and atmosphere and more like padding the runtime. Point of order here, when Sasuke leaves Token the next morning while she slept, and she runs after him the next day, you're probably thinking that she meets back up with him to help in a fight, thus proving him wrong about her. But Instead, Sasuke just happens to run into a few demons, and they bring Token into the battle at their mercy, traveling who knows how many miles to do what exactly? Taunt him. And the hell of it is... He doesn't even really defeat the demon. No, a spirit of one of the dead villagers they passed just happened to be abducted with Token and randomly decides to possess the demon and forces its way out of our world. Are, are you seeing it now? I mean, like, how could there be that things are happening and yet nothing is happening? This is like Schrodinger's plot. Adding yet more nothing, all the while Sasuke is marching off to face sasuke -er. he's been toying around with Sasuke's clan, saying that he'd help them defeat Nobunaga, and Nobunaga just winds up killing them all because sasuke -er is a bastard. But the cherry on top of all of this is Token's admission of her utter uselessness to Sasuke as he gears up for his final battle. Take it away, Token. If you are definitely going, please kill me. I beg you! Kill me! Kage, if you die... I... Please don't leave me, Kage. Holy crap! She just stated that she'd be better off dead than without her man! And he's not even her man! 
At no point has he ever shown her the least bit of interest because this stump of a character has a one-track mind about murdering his former best friend, and yet somehow she has convinced herself that there is no one else for her! <laughs> And that is all that needs to be said about that. So it's finally time for Sasuke and Sasuke -er to have it out, with Sasuke calling him out in the midst of a battlefield. By breaking my shell as Maru and being revived as Kukuga no Miko, I transcended my frail humanity. Transcended humanity? I killed the woman I loved as Maru. No regrets. I'm sorry, but is that supposed to be an evil speech or a tweet? Things are taking a real sharp turn into Yaoi slash Vic territory, but Token ovaries up and manages to shrill Sasuke out of enthrallment. So Sasuke Air says fuck it and decides to fuse to the horse that was killed earlier, and again, it's still no match for Sasuke's bub snicked. Sasuke Air turns back to human and dies, leaving Sasuke to be tended after by Token, who now sports a similar scar to the woman who killed herself last episode, and they also share the same name, and that's supposedly important, and what the fuck ever. But hey, look, he's showing some compassion for once in his miserable life. It's coming out of nowhere, but at least it's here. You cry too much. Just like a woman. And what of Sasuke Air? Well, apparently being dead ain't good enough, so the spirit that possessed that demon a while back comes around and reincarnates him, because, get this, she was the wife he killed, and she forgives him. And Sasuke and Token find a baby around a dead mother on the side of a road, and I'll let you make the connection yourself. And that was Blood Rain. Do you remember any of that? I mean, besides the occasional spikes of emotion, either the hilarity from the weird lines or anger from the back-ass words characterization, the anime has nothing for the viewer to hold on to. It contains not a single merit that recognizes it as worthy of taking a precious real estate in your brain. It's not good or bad enough to be enjoyable, and it's certainly not horrible enough to be hateful. It just sort of floats around and leaves a minimal impact on anything that interrupts its trajectory. If you miss it, no big deal. And if you don't, no big deal either. Still, unaffecting can be a virtue sometimes, all things considered. Till next time. <laughs>